In Lothric, there is an order of researchers known for their study of lost sorceries. They are called Xanthus Scholars. In this video, we'll take a close look at this order of academics and seek to uncover what we can of their story in the lore of Dark Souls. The word Xanthus first appears in Dark Souls 1, when we meet a monarch bearing that name, Xanthus King Jeremiah. We encounter Jeremiah deep within the painted world of Ariamis, but there is no context offered within the game as to what Xanthus might mean. We aren't told directly if Jeremiah was a king of a people called Xanthus, of an order called Xanthus and separately a king, or if he was merely a king who wore yellow. Xanthus is a Greek word meaning yellow, so taken literally, Jeremiah is a yellow king. This is likely an intentional reference to The King in Yellow, a collection of short stories that were influential on horror writer H.P. Lovecraft, who in turn has been cited as an influence on Miyazaki. The only other thing told to us explicitly is that Jeremiah was a legendary exile, but we are not told where he was exiled from. However, many have noted that Jeremiah has a number of surprising connections to Isolith. Hawkshaw's video on the demons of Dark Souls is by far the most comprehensive. I'll summarize most of what they raise on their channel, but if this subject interests you, it's worth checking out on its own. Link in the description. So what are these connections that supposedly link Xanthus King Jeremiah to Isolith? To begin with, the simple fact that Jeremiah was a pyromancer, and we know that pyromancy was created when the Witch of Isolith was engulfed by chaos. Interestingly, Jeremiah is no ordinary pyromancer. He uses an ascended pyromancy flame. These ascended pyromancy flames can only be created by Quailana, one of the Daughters of Chaos. I am Quailana of Isolith. The other pyromancers we meet, Laurentius of the Great Swamp, I am Laurentius of the Great Swamp, and the Eggbearer Engie, do not have the capacity to create such a flame. Moreover, Jeremiah is one of only three characters we meet who can cast Chaos Pyromancies. The others are Quailana and the unnamed daughter, protecting the bed of chaos deep within Lost Isola. Chaos pyromancies are deeply connected to the demon ruins. The chaos pyromancies we can find are either taught by Quailana, always fear the flame, granted by the Fair Lady for achieving status within the Chaos Servant's Covenant, or found within Isolith, protected by one of the witch's daughters. Given the connections between Isolith and pyromancy generally, and chaos pyromancies in particular, it is quite notable that Jeremiah casts Great Chaos Fireball, Chaos Storm, and Chaos Fire Whip. Not just because those are Chaos Pyromancies, but because they are the exact same pyromancies used by the Daughter who protects the entrance to the Bed of Chaos. Their fighting styles are nearly identical. We should also take note of Jeremiah's physical appearance, specifically his crown. Though this may indeed just be an absurdly large head wrapping, there are also creatures in Dark Souls that take the forms of twisted, monstrous abominations, most of which are associated with Isolith. The Chaos Flame corrupted, mutated, and created life, like demons in the Bed of Chaos, Quelag and her sister. The bizarre monsters that can be found around Isolith, like Chaos Eaters and Sunlight Maggots, are further examples of these mutations. A close examination of Jeremiah's concept art even reveals what might be tentacles on Jeremiah's right shoulder, suggesting there may be more to Jeremiah than meets the eye. An infection, a growth, manifesting on his person. Jeremiah's crown also bears a striking resemblance to the parasitic Wallhugger, a unique non-respawning enemy found during the descent into Blight Town, located just above Isolith. Many of the deformed monsters of Blight Town, such as the Crag Spider, appear to have been affected by chaos, and the Wallhugger is no exception. Killing it grants access to treasure. The Pyromancy, Power Within. Just one floor down, we find the whip. Together, these are the two weapons of Xanthus King Jeremiah. Pyromancies and whips. 
Curiously, the wall hugger itself also has a tenuous connection to Isolith. Game data refers to it as Prince Isolith. Taken on its own, this may not seem like a very strong connection, but this title actually has fascinating connotations. The original design plan for the Bed of Chaos boss fight involved a King Isolith that would sit a throne, though this plan was scrapped. An added wrinkle is that From has previously stated that they ended up moving some cut content they couldn't bear to get rid of into the painted world. Given all of these connections, as well as the fact that Jeremiah is the only named king in all of Dark Souls, it seems likely that Jeremiah has some connection to Lost Isolith, maybe even being King Isolith himself. Maybe a lover to the witch, or father to the Daughters of Chaos, or poor Ceaseless. We don't know if Jeremiah found refuge in Lost Isolith after becoming an exile, or if he was exiled from Isolith. Regardless of the truth, the Xanthus King Jeremiah, with some connection to the home of demonkind, finds himself in the painted world of Ariamis, where he eventually dies. And Jeremiah's story comes to an end. Or at least, it would have ended, if not for Dark Souls 3. In Dark Souls 3, the word Xanthus appears again, but this time it isn't associated with a man, but an order of scholars and, undeniably, with Ulysseel. In Dark Souls 1, the item description for the Xanthus set only referred to one individual, Jeremiah. In Dark Souls 3, however, the description says Xanthus clothing is the mark of a researcher of lost sorceries. The Xanthus crown no longer resembles the Prince of Isolith, but rather Elizabeth, the mushroom guardian of Ulysses. The crown's description makes this explicit. It reads, Crown supposedly made in imitation of a divine creature of Ulysseal, land of ancient golden sorceries. The crown is said to be emblematic of their work. The Xanthus ashes, which unlock purchasing the Xanthus set from the shrine handmaid, are described as umbral ash of a sorcerer who explored the golden sorceries of a long lost land. They were called Xanthus scholars, but some foolishly imitate them by simply dressing in yellow. The Dusk Crown Ring further adds to this connection. Its description reads, Leaf-colored crown ring bestowed upon the Princess of Ulysseel, ancient land of golden sorceries. Ulysseel is synonymous for its lost sorceries, of which the Xanthus sorcerers are dedicated scholars. At first, it may seem like the Xanthus scholars merely research lost sorceries in general, and Ulysseel, home to some lost sorceries, might just be one of the subjects of their research. However, the only explicit associations ever made between Xanthus and Lost Sorceries are to those of Ulysseel, and those associations are made repeatedly. Based on these connections and the lack of connection between Xanthus scholars and any other Lost Sorceries, I contend that they are dedicated scholars of Ulysseel's Lost Sorceries. The Golden Scroll, which allows you to learn Ulysseel's sorceries and is found near the corpse of Elizabeth, supports this contention. It reads, A golden scroll chronicling the vast research of the Xanthus scholars. Give it to a sorcerer to learn the arts of Ulysseel. In the lost land of Ulysseel, the sorceries orchestrated light and were said to shine in golden hues. Nothing in-game offers any connection between the Xanthus and other lost sorceries. This vast research does not include the lost flame sorceries of Isolith, the lost crystal sorceries of Seath the Scaleless, or anything else. Giving this scroll to Orbeck prompts him to ask, What would the Xanthus scholars say with their ridiculous headwear? <laughs> they would simply slaver over this find. <laughs> what this tells us is that the vast research of the Xanthus scholars resulted in just one thing. The chronicling of Ulysseel's sorceries. There is one last minor but highly relevant connection between the Xanthus and Ulysseel. Yellowfinger Hazel. We are told by her pick that Hazel is a Xanthus scholar, and Hazel, when summoned, teaches players the proper bow gesture. In Dark 
Dark Souls 1, Undead Arcothis Gesture by Princess Dusk of Ulsi. The only material we can reference suggests that the research of the Xanthus scholars is not lost sorceries generally, but Ulysseal and its lost sorceries. This is also a good time to revisit what Xanthus means. Yellow. If we're meant to take the word literally, Xanthus scholars might merely be those who study that which is golden. Ulysseal's golden light sorceries. Within Dark Souls 3, Every time the Xanthus scholars are connected to another subject, that subject is Ulysses. Orbeck, seemingly disdainful of the Xanthus, notably does not bring them up when you bring him Logan's scroll or Seath's scroll, which he says was thought only to exist in legend. Furthermore, there is nothing to suggest a connection between the Xanthus scholars and Isolith, or demons, or pyromancies. Which brings us back to Dark Souls 1 and the Xanthus king, Jeremiah. Within Dark Souls 1, there is no connection whatsoever between Jeremiah and Ulysseal, or sorceries, or scholars. The language used doesn't even suggest that the Xanthus were a group, or an order, or a school. The word only seems to refer to Jeremiah himself, seemingly of no further significance than an interesting synonym for yellow. And yet, millennia later, the academics who focus on Ulysseal's legacy have cast themselves in Jeremiah's name and image. Therefore, there must be some connection between the scholars and Jeremiah, between Ulysseal and Jeremiah. For some reason, the scholars come to learn of and revere him. The question is, what is it? With all this background established, I'd like to offer a theory. Jeremiah ends up an important figure in Isolith. Whether because of a relationship with the Daughters of Chaos, or an aptitude for pyromancy, or because, as I believe, he was King Isolith, he undeniably has a deep connection to the Witch, or her Daughters, or Chaos, or all three. When the Chaos Flame went out of control, corrupting and creating life and demons, transforming the Witch and her Daughters, it also transformed Jeremiah, hence his head and parasitic infection. One could argue that, perhaps, at this point, Jeremiah was exiled from Isolith. This theory was raised in Hawkshaw's video. Maybe Jeremiah had something to do with chaos going out of control. But I don't think so. I think Jeremiah, like Quelana, chooses to leave Isolith behind. Demons, however, are hated and shunned by the world at large. Even contemptible monsters like Mimics will go out of their way to attack a demon. And so, King Jeremiah donned robes to hide his abominable appearance, and their yellow visage earned him a nickname, the Xanthus King. After leaving, Jeremiah would eventually find himself in Ulysseal, where he ended up in some position of prominence. Jeremiah, the only named King in Dark Souls 1, may have even fathered a lineage that resulted in the game's only named princess, other than Guinevere, the powerful sorcerer, Thus. But all lights, eventually, must fade. As indicated by Goth's presence in Ulusil long before the Abyss would threaten to swallow it, the people of Ulusil were loyal to the gods of Anorlando, and the gods were no friends of demons. Lord Gwyn led an army of Silver Knights to fight the Chaos Demons. Under such circumstances, if Jeremiah's demonic blood came to light, he clearly would need to face exile. Though likely not death, if he was important enough. And so the gods, ever fearful of demons, would seal him in their most secure prison, the painted world of Arianus. We know the image of Jeremiah, at least superficially, lives on in an order of preeminent scholars, perhaps founded before Ulysseal's fall or long after. Maybe this order was even formed by Jeremiah's own sorcerer daughter, Dusk, or someone who revered her. Such a tale would explain why the Xanthus scholars, as they are portrayed in Dark Souls 3, have absolutely no connections to pyromancy, demons, or Isolith, despite their progenitor, Jeremiah, 
seemingly being connected solely to those things and nothing else. Because any connection from Ulysseel to Lost Isolith would need to be hidden. Somehow or another, a powerful pyromancer with strong connections to chaos ended up important enough to Ulysseel to inspire the clothing and name of its dedicated sorcerers, despite the fact that no discernible connections exist between the two, beyond the superficial. This story could explain how that might have come to be. I'm very interested in the subject of Ulysseel and the Xanthus scholars, so please let me know what you think in the comments. I know I don't have all the answers on the subject, and I'm sure there's details I've missed or gotten wrong, or alternative theories that could explain this connection, but I hope this can help start some interesting discussion on the subject. Thanks so much for watching, take care.